Hey everyone, it's Joe at Quad Specs, and today we're going to show you how to set up your Free Sky, or as some may call it, the FR Sky version of the B Core F3 Evo flight controller. And we'll be doing the setup today with the Beta Flight software. You'll notice this video is fairly long, uh, but we promise you that we did everything we possibly could to compress it down and still show you all the important information to get this set up. So without any further delays, let's get started. Before we set up the flight controller, we're going to set up the Tyrannus QX7 remote for a new drone model, and we'll call this one the B Core E010, mainly because we'll be using the E010 frame for this build. Once you're satisfied with the model name that you picked out, we'll scroll down to the internal RF mode which will change from D16 to D8 which will automatically update the channel range from channel 1 to channel 8. So you notice the only other setting on this page would be the bind process which we'll go ahead and do next. So there are two conductive pads that are available that need to be jumpered together in order to complete the bind process on the flight controller. Uh, we had a heck of a time getting that to happen with just using a conductive material in between the two pads. So we decided to just solder both of them together. And when the process is done, all you need to do is take some solder wick and pull that solder off of there and then separate those two pads. So if you're familiar with soldering and you're comfortable with it, that's the way to do it. It's actually fairly easy. Uh, but if not, you can also just use some kind of conductive material in between the two pads. Uh, we just had a hard time getting it to work. All right, so once you have the bind pads connected, you just need to plug in the battery and go back to the QX7 remote. And in the receiver portion, there's the, bu the bind button. Um, all you need to do is press the select button when on that selection. And you'll notice that the lights on the flight controller will turn off when the bind process has completed. Moving on to the next settings in the QX7, We'll head over to the uh, mixer where you'll notice that the channel 1 through 4 is the typical AETR, aileron, elevation, thrust, and rotor. So I like to keep that the same between, my, uh, between multiple drones. And that setting can actually be changed in beta flight to match the transmitter so that everything works properly. So with channel 1 through 4 used for the basic flight functions, we're going to use channel 5 to arm the flight controller. So essentially that's the transmitter's way of telling the flight controller that we're ready to fly. And we will use the top left button on the QX7, which is the SF source, uh, to do that function. So the only thing that needs to be set up is the mixer name, which we'll call ARM, and the source will change to SF. Uh, for channel 6, we're going to use that to change the mode of flight. So you can set this up for multiple modes, whether it's horizon, acro, uh, angle mode. Uh, what we'll stick with is angle mode, which needs to be set up specifically, and the acro mode, which is the default mode. So if it's not in any of the other modes, it will default to the acro mode. Uh, so we'll name this channel the, the mode, and when we flip the SA button, which is the um, top left on the face of the QX7, that will change between the different modes. We'll pause there with the transmitter and we'll move over to the setup of the flight controller in beta flight. Uh, so you'll want to make sure first thing first is to get the correct firmware on the flight controller. Uh, if you just received this it's likely running a version of clean flight and if you've already flashed it before you may be running a previous version of beta flight. And to find out what version you're running you go to the CLI command box and type in the word version and this will show you the current version that's uploaded on the flight controller so if that's clean flight or if it is a other variation of beta flight or not the most recent as long as the most recent is stable that is the one that we recommend that you use if you can if you end up needing to flash the firmware just head over the head over to the firmware flasher tool where you will use the SP Racing F3 Evo and the second drop down will be, like we said before, just use the latest stable version that you can find uh, unless uh, there are any notes from others saying that um, they've run into issues with that version of the firmware. 
uh, and then you would load the firmware, uh, which we typically do online. And once that's ready, you can flash the firmware uh, with the button there to the left. But we're already on the current version, so we will not be doing this step. So now that we're set up with the firmware, we'll head back in and connect and go to the CLI command box. And we will go ahead and set the motor PWM rate. So uh, we'll type in set space motor underscore PWM underscore rate equals 1000, which will set the rate within the flight controller. And then after that's done, we just type in save and hit enter, and it'll save that command and kick us out uh, and then automatically reconnect. Uh, so now we'll head back into the CLI command box where you can verify that the setting made it into the flight controller by typing in the word dump. And that just brings all of the settings from the flight controller and prints them out in the CLI command box. So um, you can go through, check, and make sure that the command set motor underscore PDM, PWM underscore rate equals 1000. And once that's done, we can go back in and start to set up the ports. So we'll go ahead and start by turning UART1 on. And then in the line with UART2 uh, in the row, you'll go over to Serial RX and enable that. As this will be a serial connection from the transmitter to the flight controller. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save and reboot. And it should automatically reconnect us. And we'll go into the Configuration tab where we have the quad X for the mixer. In the ESC motor features section, we're gonna to go to brushed because we have a brushed flight controller and brushed motors. And for the other options, you can go over to the instructions that are provided. Or it'll tell you to leave off the first option and then to turn on motor stop and the disarm motors uh, regardless of throttle value. So we'll go ahead and do that, and keep in mind we'll come back to this section after we've gone through a little bit more down below. Uh, so you'll notice that we don't have really any of the other options turned on because the flight controller is pretty basic. It's nothing too fancy. It doesn't have the option for RSSI. It doesn't have GPS. So we'll go ahead and turn those off. We'll head over to receiver where we will select the serial-based receiver. And the next option will be SBUS, because that is the protocol that this built-in receiver on the flight controller uses. Um, you'll notice that down below in the system configuration, the rate for the gyro, which it, the update frequency is 8 kilohertz, and the PID loop frequency is 2 kilohertz. So we'll leave both of those alone. And the PID loop frequency is essentially just how often um, the motors are told what to do with their speeds. And then down below here in these other features, again, we turn all these off, uh, kind of make things simple so you're not confused with uh, what's used and what's not. So back up to the top, we talked about the PID loop frequency being at 2 kilohertz. Well, we had some issues with some noise, vibration with uh, those settings, so we're going to go ahead and turn the motor PWM speed separated from PID speed. So the motors will be told what to do by an internal PWM frequency generator that's on the flight controller. So we're going to set this to 16,000, which is 16 kilohertz, which is essentially saying that the motors are going to be told what to do faster than the PID loop frequency. So um, we've had very good luck with this. It got rid of any of the noise and vibrations that we had without that setting on, and we much prefer it over the standard settings that come with the instructions. So we will save, and the flight controller will reboot. Uh, looking at the PID tuning, uh, we've changed a few things here, but nothing too drastic. Um, this video is not really intended to go over that, so um, the stock settings will work as far as the, the PID tuning, uh, but you can do some adjustments as you get some experience with this flight controller. So next we'll do a quick recap of the receiver section where we have everything set up with the QX7. We have AETR for the channel map, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the roll pitch, yaw, throttle, aux 1 and 2 are set up. So we will head over to modes and we will set up the arm function which is AUX1, and we have that on the toggle switch SF. And with the QX7 transmitter uh, connected to the flight controller, that status shows up in Betaflight. And when we toggle it, it goes over to 2000. And when we put it back, uh, it goes back to 1000. So we want any time that this switch is pulled towards us in the 2000 range, we want it to be armed. So that's why we're going to set it up here. And then moving over to the only other setting we're going to put together in the modes is the angle range. So um, same thing here. 
the SA switch, which is the top left corner of the QX7, is a three position switch, and we're using aux two. So right now we're right around 1000. If we move it to the center, we're around 1500. And if we move it all the way down, we're close to 2000. Um, so we're actually gonna change this. I want this range to be any time we're in the up position or the middle position, uh, I want this to be in angle mode. And anytime we're in the lower position, I want it to be in acro mode or full rate mode. So the way this flight controller is set up, uh, if you do not have a setting for the flight mode, it will default to acro mode. So that's why we have this blank portion off to the right uh, that will essentially default to acro mode. And as I mentioned, we won't set up anything else in this section. So moving back to the receiver section, you'll notice we have roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle. So we haven't set up any of these, but they all need to be set up individually. And the range for each one of these is between 1,000 and 2,000. And the midpoint that we have set is at 1,500. So we can move the sticks back and forth, and we can see just what ranges we're getting, uh, what the flight controller is receiving from our, re from our transmitter. And we'll start with the roll. So right now, uh, we're at 1520 for the midpoint. So you go to the outputs in the QX7 and scroll down to sub trim, and that's where you will adjust up or down. In this case, we'll be going down, and we want to hit that 1500 mark. So we'll keep scrolling. You can see it real time update um, to where we get 1500. So we'll save that sub trim, and then we'll check out the max value so we hit 2027 and the min value is 1007 so the 1007 falls within range but the 2027 is too high so we'll go to the max output on the QX7 and we'll hold the stick to the right so we can see our change in real time and we'll scroll that back until we get I like to get within uh, at least under 2000 so we're not operating outside those limits so we use 1996 for for our top value. So you'll notice that the midpoint we had 1500 is now changed. That's because we adjusted the top end point which then automatically adjusts the midpoint. So when you're going through these settings it's best to change your max first and then change your midpoint um, because that will have an effect on your midpoint. So you have to go through and make those same adjustments for pitch, yaw, throttle, and once all those are done, you, you can go through and you can check your aux 1 and your aux 2 settings and make sure that those are still showing up right. And at this point, you should be able to save all of your settings and get ready to plug in a battery and fly your newly set up flight controller. So now you should be able to turn on your transmitter let it bind with the flight controller and once that's been done you arm with that switch we set up before and you let her fly. Alright everyone thanks for watching if you have any questions please leave it in the comments below and we'll see if we can get you going in the right direction and make sure you subscribe for more how to's reviews and drone testing videos. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.